and revealed your very self, your real self, to the people whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept and obeyed your word. He's still talking about eternal life here, keeping and obeying his word. I went down and tried to help them and refocus them and get them back on track to say, this is actually what it means. I mean, how many times did Jesus in a certain way go, what do you think murder is? That's when you kill somebody. And Jesus goes, do you think being angry at Daniel's murder? It could be if I was that angry. He just puts, he just puts scripture into such a perfect example. He's like, yeah, we, we think this word is this, but no, it's so much deeper than that. And then he lived it out. If you went through the false trial that Jesus went through at the time and took the beatings and the whippings and the scourgings and, and, and the totality of the brutality of that and could you not say one word or would you have to defend yourself or would you have to say something back and I'll, I'll get you yeah I'll get you Jesus never said a word them. yeah Hey, you're hanging on the cross. Uh, John, take care of my mom. Take care of my mom. Father, forgive her. Yeah. And he gave up. The key is, he gave up. When yeah. The scripture says the ghost. He gave his spirit up. Because as God, he could have stuck his tongue out and went, guess what? You can't kill me. And hung there forever. And they could have been poking holes in him forever. And he's going, can't kill me. He could have easily just said, watch this. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, <laughs> nothing. Scripture tells us, the angels are waiting. Boss, <laughs> just one word. How dare they do this to you? And he's like, no. I want to show them love. I love them so much, I will take the pain and torture to show them what it means to be real. So as we began this discussion, there's times you need to be real with people and say, no, that's not biblical. That's not the way it is. This is what Scripture says. And somehow, some way, the Holy Spirit within you will be able to do like he did with Jesus and be able to love that rascal the same time that the Holy Spirit is convicting that rascal. And somehow, some way, it won't be I'm going to get this person. Hey, you idiot, you need to stop doing that. You're going to go straight to hell. Don't think that's any vocabulary in the Holy Spirit's way he would convict someone. I think he would use, Jesus used stories. Use a story and all of a sudden they'll start talking to you. They'll have an interaction with you. You'll be like, so what are you trying to say? Well, I don't know. In this scenario, this person, they obviously failed. So there was judgment put upon them. Are you trying to say? And then a conversation starts to happen. I've manifested your name and revealed your very self, your real self. Do we manifest the presence of God? Do we allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us in a fraction of that? I get moments. But, I, but do I do it in such a capacity, in such a length of time, in such a consistent manner that the world watches? That your neighbor watches and going, I saw what you're going through. I don't know how you've held up. I don't know whatever the adjectives they want to put in there. You have something that I want. What is it? Do we manifest, allow the Holy Spirit to manifest through us? To the people whom you've given me out of the world. Do we grasp that there is a, there is a group of people that we are responsible for? Ah. Maybe moments I get that. Say, say more about a group of people that we're responsible for. 
God obviously has a plan for us. Whether our plan is to be the impact on a family, our children, in, 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 in the smallest sense, and then say that, say that that bubble expands a little bit, your business,